So in this video, I wanted to really show the details of how I've improved this deadbeat escapement. And yes, using magnets. So one of the main issues with a deadbeat, you can see this wheel right here, those fine teeth on this are easy to get damaged. So those can get hit by the pallets and if you nick one of them, dent one of them, it won't work and you got to remake these. So I think any clockmaker knows how fragile they are. So a lot of people have designed, like you see here, this breakaway clutch. This is one of Wilding's design. There's a lot of them out there of trying to protect these wheels through the useful life of these clocks. And it's just a matter of time before someone does something wrong, and I'll show you the kind of errors that can drive this damage. So looking at this tower clock that I'm working on, you can see this escapement in action. The reason it's called the deadbeat is you see when those pallets come and engage, the wheel stops, and that's the deadbeat. And it does that because the angle that those pallets are made on. You can see what's different in the escapement here is up top the way it encircles that uh, arbor. What's in that little brass piece there are two magnets. Those magnets are holding that steel escapement down in place. And the failure mode is if that pendulum, because it's very heavy on either a regulator or on a tower clock, if it gets swung improperly, it can damage. It can come in there and hit and bend those pallets or bend those teeth right away. You can see here, if I get in with this though, what's different is it can decouple with those magnets. So you saw me touch it and it would stop and it would jump away and right below there, the magnets. But what was asked before, I think a lot of people looked at this and said, hey, this thing could be more dangerous because if that ever got loose, you could hit that wheel and damage. But I'll show you through kind of abusive testing here that there's no real way for this to get loose. And you can see if you did this kind of work on a standard clock, there'd be damage. Now I can get real extreme and I'll dislocate that pallet and really just overdrive this thing. And you can see it rocking up top. And that's it getting over traveled, but then releasing itself, almost like a binding. So this thing in turn has been very safe. I've used this in my regulator. I've now gotten this tower clock and it won't damage. And you put this back in place and you'll see me put it back in with this pendulum and it's off to the races. It just, it just works. So you can see it back and working. Now if you look, another interesting thing is you can actually, with the clock, remove this. You can see me take it loose because it's just held with the magnets. And you can see there's a little pin there that keeps everything centered. And you can see when that's out, this thing wants to run and it's loose. But you'll see once it's been put in place, that'll snap right back down in. Because it wants to be home, wants to center. Then it's off and just works again. And it finds the exact home. And anyone that knows how sensitive this is, it's got to be right on the money. And this works. So I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I'll show soon the rest of this tower clock. We're getting ready to install this thing up in its final location, so I'll detail that. But really wanted to put to rest some of the concerns over this uh, modification to the deadbeat. Hope you like it. If you want more info, designs, uh, send me a note. I'd be glad to provide. Everyone take care, and we'll see you back soon.